So, ich freue mich auf den heutigen Abend. Wir haben ähm, zu unserem Jahresthema The Making of wieder zwei ähm, tolle Vortragenden mit ihren Geschichten. Unsere Typo-Vorband ist der Nolan Paparelli und ähm, der Raphael Bernardo kommt dann als der Hauptact heute. Und ähm, ja, The Making Of ist unser Jahresthema. Wir, es geht um Prozesse, wir wollen Geschichten hören, tiefer reinspüren, ähm, wie die Dinge bei jedem Einzelnen so funktionieren. Was hat dazu geführt, dass ähm, vielleicht eine Schrift so entsteht oder was hat dazu geführt, dass ein Buch entsteht und das sind teilweise auch sehr persönliche Dinge, die auf diesem Weg passieren und ähm, wir interessieren uns dieses Jahr genau gerade um diese besonderen Einblicke. So, da freue ich mich, dass wir fangen gleich an mit dir, Nolan. Ähm, du stellst uns heute deine, deine Schrift vor. Nolan kommt eigentlich aus der französisch sprechenden Schweiz, ist jetzt hier in München und arbeitet hier in München als Type Designer, als Grafikdesigner. Du hast dann in Lausanne an der Universität für Kunst und Design studiert und ähm, hast eine, eine, eine Schrift, die Everett, gestaltet, die du uns jetzt auch vorstellst und die liegt uns der TGM ganz besonders am Herzen, weil wir haben sie ausgewählt für unser Erscheinungsbild und deshalb sind wir doch ganz besonders ähm, neugierig und gespannt, wie der Weg, der Entstehungsweg dieser Schrift war, die wir jetzt in unserer ja, in unserem Logo überhaupt und jetzt auch, ähm, wir sind am, am, am Werkeln für die neue Webseite, da wird die auch verwendet und äh, sind wir gespannt, wie die Schrift entstanden ist. Darf ich dich auf die Bühne bitten? <lacht> Danke dir. Hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. And many thanks for the uh, invitation and the nice introduction, uh, Petra. I'm glad to be here tonight to talk about uh, my project. And, <coughs> and so for this uh, theme of the making of, uh, I found it interesting to, to show you the process of uh, designing my typeface Everett, which you are uh, reading right now. Um, Petra introduced me already, but so I uh, come from Switzerland and uh, I had the luck to study at ECAL um, in Lausanne and graduated from there um, in 2015 in graphic design. And uh, since 2017, I um, started my own design practice and I'm in Munich since three years. And as I'm a lab designer in Munich, I thought it makes sense to be part of the uh, typographic Society of Munich. <laughs> so I'm part of uh, the TGM since uh, a year now. And shortly about the, the, my background from ECAL, uh, this was an exhibition about uh, 10 years of graphic design uh, at ECAL, uh, which was exhibited uh, within the building. Uh, there was this exhibition catalog, which was done as well. Um, and in it, there was some, uh, that's a very old also from me on the left. Uh, with some works from other classmates. Um, just to explain that the, the, the Everett was initiated at ECAL during my studies uh, in late 2014. And uh, at the time there was a semester project about uh, the theme of exhibition. And uh, I, was, uh, I discovered this photographer called uh, Daniel Everett, which works a lot with architecture and makes a lot of digital collage. And yeah, I was very uh, impressed by this work and very inspired, and I want to to make something based on, on this uh, on him. And uh, at the time, I had a, another draft of fonts, which was much more constructed, like a, like a thin font on the uppercase, and I took this as a base to um, to develop a further the font. And I uh, actually kind of just combine a lowercase together and. I was a bit caught up with the time and uh, showing stuff to my uh, teachers and during the process I had to, to cut some letters and uh, mix them together and I found out this interesting cut that, um, that I found was uh, pretty interesting 
And uh, yeah, after this semester project, after a few uh, months, uh, there was the result of the of the, the font, which was then called uh, Everett. And uh, it was a very first rough uh, sketch of a, of a regular cut. And um, <coughs> the output from this semester project was uh, this exhibition catalog for Daniel Everett, which uh, was doing an exhibition uh, in Chicago. And if anything, it's the, the teachers and also my classmates were not really uh, interested into that, but more the, the kind of bonus uh, thing I did, uh, like overnight for <laughs> this project, and which was the, the very first specimen of uh, Everett. And um, yeah, this was like a poster uh, with the, the cut inside, which you can use as a booklet. Um, this thing that no one knows really how to fold back together. Um, and yeah, after that, uh, we had to, uh, it was actually the, the bachelor process, the diploma at ECAL, uh, the bachelor diploma in 2015. And um, I had some different ideas uh, to more like go into a digital design, but after some time, uh, my teachers and also my classmates, they kind of convinced me to just uh, focus and continue uh, on designing Everett. And so the kind of first task was to um, design, try to think of different ways how the, of this regular can uh, be translated in a light, uh, how can it be translated in a, in a bolder cut, uh, how these cuts are reacting uh, depending on the wave. So that was also very first uh, rough sketches. Um, and during the time I experimented a lot, um, trying to design a lot of different styles. Uh, there was a monospaced style where each letter used the same block there was um, a style more with serif, uh, a style more like a dido. So I really kind of opened up all the, the possibilities uh, with this idea of these cards. And uh, was also doing some poster design, photography. And after some time, I just needed to to focus and um, and focus on very specific uh, styles. And so that was the uh, the kind of first version of the font uh, on light regular bold and with these two other monospace fonts. Uh, one is uh, sans serif and one is serif, which you could combine together. And uh, I had the luck to be able to print um, at Ecal in a very old uh, Heidelberg offset press and did these posters. Uh, so the sort of second uh, specimen, the, the evolution of it. Um, and during the diploma, there was uh, basically one poster per style, and the background was uh, always the same page, so this more classical um, type specimen showing the, the alphabet and different texts. And the idea with that is that you could, uh, with those shapes, that you could combine them together and uh, make your own compositions, uh, play, with, play with them, and uh, yeah, arrange them on the wall. So there was this installation for the diploma. And uh, next to that, there was also, uh, of course, a table with the specimen uh, printed, uh, folded, and also this website, uh, like a mini website who, who was uh, showing the, the font uh, in different styles. Um, and uh, yeah, after the, the, the diploma, I actually was a bit more involved into graphic design and different projects. So I, I led the, the, the project a bit uh, in the drawer um, to, to, to go to sleep. And <laughs> uh, in about yeah, 2017, I got my hands back on it um, because I had actually some uh, people requesting the font. And um, there was a bit more and more interest into the font. And I saw a potential to, to, to release it. And I thought I really need to, yeah, to, to go back at it and, and really um, design it further. And yeah, during my uh, process of type design, I use a lot of screenshots. So I find it's, that it's a very nice way to just try words and try and see how it works and also uh, test like uh, the longest word in German, for instance, or <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of funny screenshots. Uh, at the time, I was also a bit more involved into this um, Instagram business or starting out. Uh, doing some kind of promotional material with the with the fonts, and I had no italic. Uh, I guess I was too lazy to do an italic, <laughs> and um, I needed to do that uh, over time. And 
uh, yeah, also a special mention to uh, Michael Klaas and the friends uh, who posted this very nice uh, meme about the italics. Um, so yeah, there was no italics uh, for this, uh, oh, sorry, for this uh, sort of second version of the font, but I uh, pushed it further and designed different, uh, a bit more wave in it. Uh, got rid of the mono serif font, uh, only was focusing on the mono uh, regular, the, the sans serif one. And this was basically uh, pictures I was publishing on my website and, and explaining the project and uh, just saying, okay, it's uh, available upon request and just write me an email and we can figure out uh, that you know you can use it in your project. And uh, during that time, uh, starting from 2017, there was actually a lot of people using the fonts, uh, even if it was uh, unreleased. Uh, for instance, uh, the, the, this, this is the Garage magazine from, uh, designed by Meryon Meret in uh, Cologne. Um, and some other projects were more architecture uh, related. Uh, so this was a um, rebranding for Morrison Company, it's an uh, architecture firm in London. Um, also this, uh, the Swiss Pavillon uh, at the Venice uh, uh, Biennale of Architecture in 2018. They also used the fonts and for the scenography and also for this uh, catalog. So that was all kind of early uses of the fonts. And um, yeah, it's always, as a type designer, it's always so rewarding to see the fonts uh, sort of in the wild and used in interesting projects. And also notice that you get uh, connected to a lot of uh, studios and designers and it's a nice way to, to sort of network. Um, and this was especially uh, nice for me because this was a uh, rebranding for a streaming platform with some uh, billboards in uh, New York. So it's, um, yeah, quite a big uh, thing for me. <laughs> and um, yeah, the, the thing is, I, uh, I had this font kind of available on request, but still had no italics. And um, after some years, I also found that I need to push the font even further. And uh, so in about two years from 2018 to 2020, I uh, decided to, to go back to the, to the drawing table and, uh, and go, go at it again. And I actually started everything from scratch again and, and uh, redesigned it again, uh, designing more wave, designing also the italics, uh, which was quite a challenge since it, uh, I had to, it was my first italic, so I had to, to learn it. Um, and uh, yeah, again, I always work with a lot of uh, screenshots. Um, and I, I like this sort of uh, moments in the process that you, you're designing something and some unexpected accidents happen or some interpolation problem. Um, and yeah, I think a lot of my process is about uh, uh, this kind of screenshot making um, on the go. And uh, yeah, during that time I was working on a lot of different wave, also a bit more stream, so I extended the, 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 the font spectrum uh, from very hairline to very thin to very bold. Uh, also working with uh, variable fonts, of course. Um, so I, uh, yeah, this was kind of first uh, sketches of how the, 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 the new font family then uh, looked like to the, the V3 or the uh, version three, and this time with italics. Um, and this, uh, yeah, this was actually uh, my uh, master. So in type design, we say you you work on a master. It's like uh, you can work on two masters, and between those, so that's like a headline, and it's a regular. Between those, you can interpolate and have all the wave in between. So I worked on actually six masters. Uh, this hairline version, very thin. This regular and a uh, super cut, uh, which is very heavy. And uh, yeah, a little uh, note about the font, um, or about the design is that the, the cuts were obviously uh, inspired by the, the, the photography of Everett. And it has a, a high attention to the, to the letters, uh, but also keep um, a reading comfort when it's set in small sizes. And that's, that's the whole idea of behind Everett is that it's it's a sort of display font, but also text typeface uh, that you can use in small text and captions. Uh, and so it's an interesting balance between something very graphic and also something 
organic and, and somehow um, very plain or traditional, a traditional uh, kind of uh, Swiss grotesque font. And uh, which was also interesting in this process was to work on this very extreme wave. So how the, for instance, the, the capital M and with these strokes and these curls uh, in the super, how does it react in this wave? In the regular, it's it's uh, it's touching just slightly, and then in in the hairline, they actually disconnected. So it's just a kind of a bunch of strokes coming together, um, design, uh, making the letters, and so you reach the same effect uh, on this different wave. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's like how it looks then at the end, uh, you know, used in a very display uh, way. Um, in big titles, uh, so it's very sharp and very, it has a lot of, uh, it's very expressive. But then when you said it in sort of copy text, um, all these, these cuts and these uh, very expressive features are, are very tempered down and, uh, and start to be very, yeah, just plain and just a sort of normal uh, sans serif typeface. Um, so yeah, that's sort of my proof when I, uh, design the font and just print it out and try it in combination also with the italic um, and you know different special uh, glyph to see how it reacts um, and this is actually what uh, what you have to, to work on it if you do such an extensive typeface uh, so this is about this is for one master it's about 850 uh, glyph um, and so uh, a lot of them are actually generated uh, and are components, um, but uh, most of them, uh, yeah, you have to design, so it's uh, you know, a lot of time and a lot of effort to do it. And you have to imagine this is one master and I had to work on six masters, so it's, uh, yeah, a lot of work. <laughs> um, and yeah, I also found it interesting how you, you can see uh, how the wave can be uh, overlapping uh, and what is happening between all these strokes. It's quite interesting. And uh, yeah, so in about 2020, I was actually uh, finished with the sort of full font family, ready to be released. And uh, yeah, then COVID happened, but obviously. So in 2021, we could uh, release it. And um, I uh, was glad to uh, connect with um, uh, Nizar Kazan, which is a designer in Switzerland, uh, we got in touch uh, like over uh, social media and follow uh, each other our work, and we were both like very interested in our work. And uh, he founded a platform called uh, Velcan, which is um, a design platform that sells uh, a good curation of uh, books and typefaces and objects. And so the foundry part is actually called a type dot Velcan. And uh, we were lucky to be releasing the, the platform in March 2021 with uh, my typeface uh, Everett and he designed uh, Lausanne, which is another uh, sans serif typeface. And the funny thing is with him is that he had a sort of similar uh, background that he made this font and over time he got more and more uh, requests. And uh, yeah, so we thought when we uh, released both, both of these fonts uh, together, then can go wrong, and uh, until now we have uh, quite a, a good success with the platform. So we, we yeah, I'm quite uh, quite lucky. Um, so that's the, uh, the, uh, the the actually the um, the final result of this whole process of uh, five years of designing the font. Um, so the, the the font family in ten styles, from hairline to super, with the corresponding italics. And uh, yeah, of course, some promotional material um, about the font and how does it work in you know different different wave. Um, and uh, this is just a sort of parallel because uh, I want to talk about the Everett uh, Mono. This is an experiment uh, trying to figure out what happens between uh, a proportional font and a mono space font. Uh, where well the monospace has a, each letter is, uses one block of the same width. The proportional use different uh, width. 
So this is a variable font experiment uh, to see how it uh, you know, reacts. Um, how does it work between both uh, instances? And this is um, actually kind of addition to the to this whole Everett um, project, the, the Everett Mono, which I uh, worked on it then last year after the release of the normal font. And uh, I was uh, I was sort of interested uh, in doing all the wave I was doing with the normal font in a monospace uh, structure. And uh, so again, like in 10 styles, uh, including the italics, which was a lot of work, but uh, I did it anyway. And this is how then it looked on, the, um, on our uh, foundry. And uh, another um, Everett-related project, uh, this is the, the, the last specimen, the sort of third version of the specimen. Uh, of Everett, uh, which I did uh, earlier this year, uh, which is basically a, a combination of uh, different uh, photographic posters showing Everett pictures and uh, type posters with two different papers, and it's posters that are folded twice and uh, combined together as a as a booklet. And so you can, uh, yeah, use it as a publication, but also as a poster for home or. Uh, or for the office, and uh, so this uses uh, Everett's pictures with uh, codes about Everett uh, set in Everett uh, typeface. So this is a 100% uh, <laughs> Everett product, and uh, I uh, took some copies uh, here tonight. Uh, you can um, in the in the door outside. Uh, you can take it for free or pay as you want. Uh, there's a few copies, uh, or just let me know if you want one. Um, and yeah, to sort of conclude, there's this nice idea of like forever Everett that I, I've, been, I've been kind of forever working on it since uh, yeah, late 2014, 2015. And um, I don't show it here, but I also work on some other um, uh, version of the typeface, like a, a script extension, so like a, a Greek version of the typeface or a Cyrillic version of the typeface. And uh, yeah, I quite like that this idea of it's a kind of forever ongoing process about this uh, font and I always see like a potential to, to do something. Um, and uh, yeah, just uh, sort of self-promotion. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram or follow our um, platform, Velcan, uh, type.velcan as this, this foundry um, page and uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Herzlichen Dank für die Vorstellung der Everett. Vielen Dank. Wenn ihr Fragen habt, dann Roland, ähm, auch die Fragen, die ihr nachher für Raphael habt, die stellen wir einfach alle danach, nach dem nächsten Vortrag.